Oh, I beg your pardon. I must have dozed off. Falling asleep like that reminds me of another sleepy fellow. I don't suppose you have time for another tale. Let me tell you about the museum curator Blathers, and maybe a bit about someone who hasn't yet turned up here on the island, if that takes your fancy. Born on September 24th, and although he seems much older because of all the knowledge he possesses, Blathers is actually only in his 20s. His younger sister Celeste was born on September 7th. She is considerably younger than Blathers, but the two seem to get on rather well despite the age difference. The two were raised in the city by their parents. From a young age, Blathers had always been fascinated by creatures both living and extinct. He always dreamed of becoming an archaeologist, travelling the world and finding fossils that no one had ever seen before. Now if you know our beloved owl, then you will know he has a huge fear of any creepy crawly. But you may wonder, what caused this fear? When Blathers was a child, a mantis had started living within his desk. Well, when mantis lay eggs, they have an egg case. Come spring, that case breaks for the baby mantis to hatch. But it doesn't just break nicely, no. It bursts open and hundreds of mantis can be released. Unfortunately for Blathers, this happened with the mantis living in his desk, causing hundreds of mantis to swarm his room. This is where his fear of bugs began. Celeste did not have this fear and rather enjoyed watching butterflies fly through the air, much to Blathers' dismay. But Blathers believed that insects should still be studied, however. He just didn't want to touch them. He was also attacked by a snapping turtle when he was young. It chased him across a car park and he had to climb on top of a car to escape it. But he never developed a fear of turtles. I assume he is just more cautious now. I find it odd that he didn't just fly away from the turtle, because of the two owl siblings, he can fly. Celeste unfortunately never learned how to. Sadly, despite her best efforts, she could never master the technique and succumbed to the idea that she would never be able to leave the ground. Though there was one positive to this fact. She became enthralled by stargazing and wants to share this love with anyone who wants to listen. After school, Blathers was accepted into university to continue his studies and earned multiple degrees. During his studies at university, he stayed living at home with his parents in Celeste to save money. He often stayed late on the behest of his professor, working in the university laboratory. His fear of bugs followed him to university and did unfortunately cause him a little bit of trouble. One summer, he got a part-time job in the library. The books in this particular library had a mould problem, and Blathers' job was to ensure the books were laid out in the sunlight to dry and combat the problem. However, some of the lesser read books would have lice, among other bugs, crawling in them, but Blathers tried his best to put his fear aside and keep working. He would grab these particular books by the corner so he wouldn't have to touch the insects, but one of the books was too heavy and ripped. The librarians were furious, and poor Blathers was then more terrified of insects. Likewise, there was one year when his professor had asked him to invigilate the entrance exams to the university. However, once the exam had begun, the room became rather stuffy, so Blathers opened the window and a fly flew straight through. The poor owl lost his focus on keeping an eye on the prospective students and could only watch the fly. He ground his beak so hard in fear that his face muscles cramped up. Blathers wrote his dissertation on owl hoots and their effect on society and went on to get his masters, and then began to study for a doctorate. He never finished it, however, as one day his professor approached him with an opportunity. They wanted to open a museum in a town in the country, but they couldn't fill the curator position. Those at Farway Museum, the main museum in the city, didn't want to move, and no one in the new museum's town was qualified. So for Blathers, who had recently received his curator's licence, the opportunity couldn't have been better timed. But this did mean he would have to leave before finishing the doctorate, and he wouldn't be able to officially identify fossils, his favourite subject. University was not all bad though, this was also the time where he first met a wonderful pigeon named Brewster. Blathers was in the middle of writing one of his thesis but was having a hard time. The deadline was approaching and he just couldn't finish it. He'd go from cafe to cafe trying to finish his work. In one of those cafes, the barista said to him, there's nothing more bitter than a rushed cup of coffee. The sentence stuck with him and he realised he couldn't just rush the thesis, he had to take his time with it, just like a barista does with coffee. That barista was none other than Brewster. From that day, they became good friends. Brewster's time in the city was not easy though. Most people on the island will tell you city life is difficult especially Tom Nook. Land in the city was expensive and taxes were just as bad, and in a city as large as it was, coffee shops were not hard to come by, so standing out was not easy. Brewster's coffee is good, don't misunderstand. His pigeon milk is to die for, but it wasn't enough when there was so much competition. He struggled to fill the seats and couldn't make ends meet. Eventually, he thought it was time to close the doors for the last time and start a new venture. At this point, Blathers had settled happily into his new museum, accepting donations of the local fauna from the townsfolk. He heard about Brewster's situation 
and couldn't let him throw in the towel. The museum had a free space perfect for a coffee shop. Blathers sent Brewster a letter to tell him that he could have the space free of charge as long as he was prepared to uproot his life and start anew. Brewster accepted and moved in as fast as possible. The pigeon loves coffee and has every desire to share that love with everyone, and so the roost was born. Business began to boom and the museum and coffee shop was the hottest spot in town, and Blathers had a place to go when he needed to de-stress after dealing with the bugs all day. It became so popular that local pop star KK Slider started performing there. Eventually, Blathers finished his doctorate so that he could identify fossils officially, but he began to miss searching for them. For him, the true joy in hunting fossils was the search, and not the find. He decided to take time out of his day to go and hunt for fossils, but realised very quickly that he was not physically strong enough to look for them. Digging holes is hard work, Mr Rossetti must be secretly ripped. Blathers also hated the worms that he would encounter on his excursions, but on one such day he did finally find something. It wasn't a fossil though, it was a time capsule. A time capsule that contained dreams of wanting to own own a shop so big that it could stock anything the writer wanted, and owning a pretty shop, even if it was small. I believe that Blathers may have come across young Tom Nook and Sable's time capsule. He reburied it and did not go hunting for fossils again. That find was enough for him. It was probably for the best to rebury it, as Sable had already grown a small disliking of Blathers just because he came from the city. This changed eventually when he came into the shop looking to get his sister something, and Sable came to realise he was a good brother. Such a good brother, in fact, that Celeste eventually came to join Blathers to work in the museum. Museum. Initially, she opened an observatory for the townsfolk to make their own constellations, before deciding to help with the museum shop instead. You probably know that you can find Blathers sleeping in the day, he is an owl after all, but Celeste shared this habit, but was rather defensive, accusing Blathers of being the only one to sleep on the job, though I think she might have been a bit worse for it. She also quickly developed a crush on Tom Nook, though she was far too young to ever grab his attention, but also had a soft spot for some of the male visitors she'd get in the observatory. It wasn't just Celeste trying to grab certain people's attention, though. She drew the attention of many townsfolk and people alike. I believe Mr Rossetti has a soft spot for her. Blathers also learnt how to identify fake paintings, which was useful as the roost was starting to get some odd customers. Unfortunately, Blathers felt that Brewster was too innocent to notice these seedy individuals were trying to take him for a ride. One tried to sell a fake piece of artwork to Brewster, but luckily Blathers stopped him. Not only that, an otter known for selling some shifty insurance tried his speech on Blathers, but our owl was far too clever for that and threw him out. Blathers did didn't like a lot of these odd characters who would bother Brewster. Apart from one woman, he couldn't help but be fascinated by. He never said who she was, but I have my suspicions it was none other than Gracie, and our boy may have a fondness for her. Anyway, despite his good relationship with his sister, Blathers felt he was letting her down by not being able to take her on adventures. He'd have loved to take her camping in the summer, but his fear of insects stopped him from being able to commit. He felt a failure to her, and one day decided to try and conquer his fear of bugs. He started by running his talon over the pictures in his copy of Giant Dictionary of Insects, which was almost followed by vomiting, but he started well. But one day he passed out while sifting through the book and awoke to Celeste tending to him. After a few times of this happening, he decided it was time to call it quits after Celeste found him once more, telling him, Big brother, I have had quite enough. This madness must end this minute. Everyone has certain fears, certain things they cannot abide. You detest bugs, brother, and that's what makes you you. Got it? Blathers has always felt pride for his sister, and although he feels he lets her down, he knows that she loves him just the same. The Roost eventually made enough money to depart from the museum and have their own building, as well as hire another member of staff with how busy it had become. For a short while, Blathers began taking expeditions looking for ore and materials for campsites. Tom Nook then announced his island getaway package and contacted Blathers to ask if he wanted to open a museum on the island. Blathers accepted straight away and came as soon as he could. And that's where they're at. Blathers runs the museum and is happy helping the islanders with learning about their local fauna. Celeste has started travelling to different islands to track meteor showers. Her love for the night sky has never been stronger, and she wants to see as many shooting stars as possible. Brewster hasn't yet made plans to come to the island, but I hope he does soon. He's probably still busy running his cafe in the country. I hope you've enjoyed this tale. It's been far happier than the ones I previously have told. Maybe you'll join me again sometime. Don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Bye!